I'm John Batchelor. Thaddeus McCotter, my colleague and co-host, is here with me from WJR, the great voice of the Great Lakes. Thaddeus, we're about to discuss the midterm elections, but at the center of this is the question of the President of the United States, and you were in meetings with the President in his first term and observed him close at hand. Does the word pragmatism come to mind when you when you think back of how the president presented himself, how he responded to other leaders in the Republican House. Good evening to you. Good evening to you, John. No, I, I wouldn't use the term pragmatic. And Charitably, I'd say he thought that he was going to operate along the principled lines that he believed in. And I think that in some cases, that's clearly near to his detriment when those principles are either errant in and of themselves or poorly applied to a circumstance that requires amelioration. We welcome Peter Berkowitz, who is writing most recently at the Real Clear Politics. Peter's a fellow at the Hoover Institution about the philosophy of pragmatism. This is a, it looks to be anchored in 19th century. Certainly whenever I hear John Dewey, I think of immediately the period that, uh, uh, the fruit of the turn of the century. But I think of 19th century philosophy. And Peter is taking the word pragmatism and placing it in front of the President of the United States. Why? Because one of the President's close counselors in the first term, Mr. Sunstein, used that same term about the president. Let's anchor this first of all. Peter, good evening to you. Did Mr. Sunstein say the president is a pragmatist? What kind of pragmatist? Well, exactly. Uh, what kind of pragmatist? Back during the, the heady days of campaign 2008, Obama was uh, presented as a guy who was a candidate who was focused on doing whatever was practical, getting done what was doing, uh, only focusing on what would work, um, eschewing high ideology, overcoming partisan differences, and so on. He would be the guy who would listen to both sides. He would be the guy who would uh, adopt policies that could work without attention to their ideological origins. That is? That was the theory, at least. True, but did not that political messaging also clash with the larger cultural messaging that he was a transformational figure, not just a mere transactional political spoilsman? It, it certainly did, and it, to, to my mind, it's one of the amazing aspects of campaign 2008. If you, look at the, if you go back and look at the rhetoric, you will see, you will find really not one, but two Obamas. One, the transformative Obama, the one who said five days before... Uh, who proclaimed five days before the election, uh, we're five days away from transforming the United States of America. But there was another Obama who, uh, who said, I'm the one who recognizes that there are shared values throughout this country. I'm the one who can uh, work with both sides. What we've discovered, or I should put it differently, what, uh, what the overwhelming evidence the accumulation of evidence over six years have showed is that the real Obama is the ideologue. Or, uh, put it slightly differently, Obama is a pragmatist, but only as regards the means. The ends, progressive transformation, are not up for grabs in his mind. That's what he's devoted to. If, if I may, John, of course, may I just of add this? The question with President Obama then becomes that he is he's a frustrated principled pragmatist, but wasn't part of that pragmatic messaging necessary to cover for the fact that he lacked the experience as a political office, as a political official, that had the transactional experience required to know how to be pragmatic as President of the United States to get things done? Uh, I think that's true, but I take it one step further. The pragmatic packaging was necessary because uh, then-Senator Obama had... Uh, had the correct understanding that were he to openly and fully reveal his program, a majority of Americans might well not have voted for him. Uh, Peter, so let's, prag- let's, let's, sorry, let, let's use a contrast here. A pragmatist and an ideologue, do they belong together or are they opposites? Well, um, if you take the official de- definitions, of course, they're opposites. An ideologue, we use the word ideologue to describe someone who is dogmatically committed to a set of partisan ideas. And we use the term pragmatist 
to describe somebody who's willing to figure out what works in this specific circumstance, willing to take from left to right whatever's necessary. But if we look at how uh, the word pragmatist actually is used, not only in politics, but we take it back to its philosophical origins, we discover that there's a deception built into it. Right. Because pragmatism doesn't really, at the end of the day, just mean let's be empirically oriented, let's be willing to subject our, uh, our opinions and our policies to the test of an experience and so on. That's common sense. Everybody should accept that. Uh, what the pragmatist says, the philosophical pragmatist says also, and I can dissolve, I can tell you that all the great disputes that have divided mankind about morals, about philosophy, about politics, I can show you that all of these are really non-questions. You need not bother yourselves with them. And the political pragmatist, President Obama, and even his famous 2004 speech at the uh, Democratic National Convention was the same way, likes to say these differences between left and right, they're really not fundamental differences. Underneath it all, we agree. It just turns out that what uh, President Obama takes to be a agreement always turns out to be the left liberal or progressive policy preference. Thaddeus, I ask you, is the president a deceiver? Is he self-deceived that he believes that he's sticking with the facts when in, when in truth he's ideologically committed to one interpretation? Yes, I don't think he is an active deceiver at all. <clears throat> I think that he's in the worst of both worlds. He's someone who does not know how to operate as a pragmatist in the political environment. And so he relies upon his principles, which unfortunately are not going to get the job done uh, that he'd like to see done. So he's kind of trapped without the experience of transactional politics capable of pulling off actual deceptive pragmatism and instead truly believes that the principles he wants to apply will get him through to a better day when in fact they won't I, th I just think he's a very frustrated man at this point not a deceiver peter you write the illiberal and anti-democratic attempt to hide partisan convictions under the cloak of pragmatism has failed those are rough words are we applying it to the president is he fr is his frustration uh, stem from the fact that he's illiberal he is not what he pretends to be well uh, i meant that in in this in this narrow respect that uh, it is it is anti-democratic and illiberal to uh, um, to disguise your your political ambitions or to pretend to be uh, to pre to pretend to engage in one kind of governance and actually engage in another. Again, if you uh, I, I agree that President Obama has turned out to be very poor at uh, uh, I think the phrase is transactional politics. Let's say to the uh, the challenge of getting things done in political life. But if we go back to 2008, it is true. This is what he ran on. Also, he boasted of his ability to come to Washington to get things done, to introduce a new kind of politics, and the new kind of politics would be a kind of politics that involved bringing uh, sides, sides together. So uh, some of that may have been well meant, but, and we have an example, by the way, from the New Republic with Professor Seth, Sunstein, a presentation of Obama's um, health care package from September 2008, quite at odds with what was rammed through Congress in March, 2000 and March 2010. Um, I, I don't think I would call the package that was rammed through uh, one that demonstrates high principles either. What I would call it is a package that was the leftmost uh, uh, the left most package that uh, that the president could get through to democratically controlled houses. My memory, Thaddeus, is that you you formed an impression of the president when you first saw him interacting with people at the White House. Did you right away assume that he was a doctrinaire liberal? Did you have doubts about it? <laughs> no, I think that my overall impression was that he was relatively naive that he was not prepared for the presidency, although one day he could be uh, over time, and that there was almost a, again, a very ingenuous response to certain things that the Republicans were doing, which 
many people more experienced in politics, certainly in the side of the beltway, would have recognized that that's what they're going to do as partisan opponents, that that's a standard operating procedure. In fact, to go back to your deceiver question and, and to back to the, the pragmatist question that's been raised, is I think that he really, at some level, like many Americans, believe that you can recreate politics with a presidency or a specific administration, when the reality is Americans, thank God, have had the freedom to fight about politics and argue about politics and debate about politics uh, since the founding of the Free Republic. Peter, the president, does he believe, does he be, uh, not believe, let me, let me choose another word, is it his perception that there is no difference between right and left? Um, I, I don't. At the end of the day, no, I don't. Uh, I don't believe that. If, for example, you look at uh, uh, President Obama's speech to Congress in February 2009, month after uh, entering the Oval Office, President sets forth a very ambitious agenda that is there's clearly a progressive agenda when right, it came right. to energy policy and so on, um, health care policy education policy uh it's it's clear he told the republicans right off i won elections have consequences he knows that there are deep differences between between left and right and he seems i must say not to have much respect for uh the interpretation of constitutional liberty that the right champions i just want to end this uh, forgive me thaddeus i just want to end this is pragmatism a bad word i mean i'm i'm just wondering all of a sudden i'm suspicious peter what do you think um uh, pragmatism as a virtue is a wonderful virtue um what it usually means is a substitute for prudence but i worry when we talk about the school of pragmatism it does become an interest a, a instrument for deceiving people, pretending that you don't have uh, principles or pretending that you are not taking uh, a partisan stance, when of course you are. Peter Berkowitz, a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution, Thaddeus McCotter, WJR, the great voice of the Great Lakes. I'm John Batchelor.